um, talking about how to amplify your content. I'm Laura Harding. I'm the account director here at Open Sponsorship. So what I was saying was we're going to touch on an introduction of Open Sponsorship. We're going to talk about why we're here today. We talk about repurposing our content and then what success looks like. So how we've been successful with a brand from start to finish um, working with us. So who are Open Sponsorship? We are the largest marketplace for athletes across the world. Um, and what that means is we have over 16,000 athletes on our platform. So we work with brands like Walmart, InBev, um, Jabra Headphones. And we also work with smaller brands like one man bands or family owner operated businesses who just wanna launch a business or talk about you know, smaller launches of products. And then on the flip side of that, the athletes that we work with. So we have big names that we work with. We have Venus Williams and LeBron James. So if you've got a spare 500,000 to a million dollars, please let us know. We'd love to set up that relationship. Um, but then we also have more niche level athletes as well who will fit the smaller brands. And as I said before, that's across 130 countries and believe it or not, over 150 sports. Who knew, hey, there was over 150 sports. So if you don't know about open sponsorship, what we are is we are a platform. And the reason our platform was built was to facilitate relationships between athletes and brands. Um, our founder and owner actually used to be uh, an agent and she saw the complete disconnect in trying to find sponsorships for her athletes. It was a long winded, complicated process. So the platform was built to completely facilitate everything from the start to end of the marketing process with working with athletes and sports influencers. So just to give you a little bit of intel on what the platform does is we can do anything from pre-campaign. So that can be working with athletes and finding out anything about the athlete, you know, anything about their follower demographic. What are the age ranges of their followers? What are the gender of their followers? Where do they live? What are they interested in? We can get any information that you need about that follower to make sure the campaign's really targeted. And then on the flip side of that, on the post campaign and uh, side of things, we can do post campaign analysis. So we know every impression that your campaign's had, we are able to manage the deliverables of it. We even know what your cost per engagement was. So you can really work out whether you're getting that return on investment, which is all that we all need to know when we're doing a marketing campaign. And then finally on open sponsorship, we are, we are a business who, we don't just deal with standard you know, influencer marketing on social media channels. We also do long-term sponsorships with athletes. So that can be three, six, 12 month sponsorships. We facilitate those. We work with teams and we work with events for event sponsorships. And then obviously we do the social media partnerships across all social media channels. And we also have an in-house um, account management team who will help the athletes to provide that really, really great user generated content. So that's open sponsorship as a whole. Let's talk about why we are here. So the reason that we're here and the reason that most people want to know about how to make sales in um, influence marketing is they want to increase their return on investment. We all need to know that we're getting back what we put in, if not more. And how we do that is by making sales with influencer content. So there's two ways in which you can do it. You can grow brand awareness or you can do things like have successful product launches, which means that in turn sales are increased and, and revenue is up. So where does it all start with influencer marketing? How, how do you get from start to end and how do we make it successful? So really what you need to remember is it all starts with the influencer or the athlete. There is nothing more important in influencer marketing than crafting that authentic long-term partnership. Authenticity, believe it or not, matters more than follower count. At the end of the day, you're not going to buy blonde shampoo from somebody with brown hair. So you need to make sure that the audience are resonating with that influencer and they're going to buy your product because they authentically follow them for a reason. Once you've found the perfect person to work with, the next step is creating the content. So there, there's various ways in which I would suggest creating content with, with influencers or athletes. But firstly, I think the most important too would be either you ta tailor your creative around the athlete or influencer, 
you and the, the how you do that is by you know making it relevant to their social channels making it fit in with their whole image as such but the best way to do it and if you've got the capability to give this um you know give this to the athlete or the influencer give them complete creative freedom at the end of the day they're the content creator this is what they do on a daily basis and their followers follow them because they like what they see so you don't want to change that you want it to be as organic as possible. And that's where it comes to getting high engagement rates. Um, a lot of followers, uh, sorry, a lot of influencers you may see with, you know, 2 million followers, for example, but they may have a 0% engagement rate. You wanna be going for the influencers who have maybe less followers, but a really high engagement rate. That means that their audience are engaged in their content and they're more likely to buy the product. So it's something always to remember. And then finally, just to put the nail in the coffin when it comes to content, always include a call to action. So a call to action could be something really simple like, um, hey, join our competition to win this free pair of sneakers. Um, like and comment to join and follow this account to enter. So always include a call to action. That is something that I think is a non-negotiable when it comes to influencer content. This is the number one piece of advice that I give to people. And believe it or not, I hear all the time that this doesn't happen and it completely shocks me because if you don't have this, then you can't continue with the next steps that I'll show you shortly, which is what turns into sales. So many times I have brands coming to me and saying, well, you know, I spoke to this influencer on Instagram and the next day they deleted the content. So I say, well, did you get? permission to use the content or did you agree a certain amount of time in which the content should be live on their social channels and the answer is always no so this is actually something that we've built into our platform which allows you to upfront negotiate how long the influencer or the athlete should have the content on the platform how long you've got to use the images of this content on certain things like your social channels, for example, and always try and negotiate as long as possible is what I would say. And the reason that you need to negotiate all of that is so you can do these steps. So the main purpose of today is how do we repurpose all of that content? How do we push sales? So there's a few steps here that I would suggest doing and most of them are free. So, you know, if you're already working with influencers then absolutely start doing this straight away. Always, always, always share it on your social channels. Share it on your social channels, tag the influencer or the athlete in it, ask them to share it. You know, it's, it's instantly gonna push people to your social, social platform, which will increase engagement, increase follow account. It's a free thing to do, always do that. Something that not many people do, and I think it's a huge um, miss across brands, share it in an email campaign. It's really simple to send out an email to all your clients or, you know, all your customers, Hey, we've just done this recent campaign with LeBron James um, to release our new sneaker. This is the campaign. Click here to buy the sneaker. Send. You know, athlete content has a higher engagement rate than standard content. So use that to your advantage by doing things like sharing it in email campaigns. Websites. So use the imagery on your website. I always suggest putting it on one of the front pages. The reason that you work with famous people, influence athletes, is because the audience knows them, they trust them, they resonate with them. So the engagement rate's always higher. If you log into a website that you've never been into before and you see a familiar face, you're more likely to follow through and go to the next steps on the website. And once you're on the website, you're 10 times more likely to buy the product from there. So it's just about getting people on there initially. If you've got a shop, simply reuse it in store displays. Um, and all those options are free. So you don't have, you know, you've already paid for your content. You can always share that content on there. This option isn't free. And I would always suggest having a little bit of a budget left over to make sure you do this. There's two ways in which you can reuse it into ads. Repurpose it on social ads, um, Instagram, Facebook, etc. And there's something called dark ads, which makes it so it doesn't come up as a sponsored ad. So it's a really subtle way of selling to people with that content. And the reason I really love using 
the content in ads is because it can measure the impact of the campaign. You really work out whether you're getting your return on investment with that and just return on investment in general influencer marketing campaigns. And, and how you do that is you could use that for different athletes or influencers and then you could compare which one's getting you the best return on investment, put more money into that person. So I could talk about it all day long, but um, finally, I'll talk about success and how success looked for a brand that we worked with recently. This is Walmart. Um, Walmart, obviously everybody knows of Walmart, but they came to us because they were hoping to do a launch of a new summer menswear range. Um, and the reason that I wanted to talk to you about this campaign, and the reason that I love it so much is because they followed every step that I've just spoken about. They did everything right by picking the, the athletes, you know, repurposing the content, pushing it through sales, pushing it through to the website. And you can see some imagery of the content that went live there. So NFL stars, they use the NFL stars to launch this new um, clothing range. And if anybody knows about engagement rates, then this will completely blow you out of the water. So this campaign actually got a 17, over 17% 17 engagement rate. The industry standard on engagement benchmarks is 2%. So as you can imagine, this was incredible. Um, we were so happy with that. Um, but other things that happened afterwards for the campaign, it's the impressions were, you know, amazing. The reach that it got was over two and a half million. Um, it got nearly 2000 clicks to the website. And as I said earlier, once you get somebody on the website, they're 10 times more likely to buy. So just getting 2000 people there is amazing. Um, you know, the, the whole campaign had higher likes, comments, engagement rates, even the athletes in this campaign got loads of extra engagement on their, their posts. So that went really well. Um, so that's it from my presentation. I'm just going to close this presentation down now and see whether we've got any questions. Um, there we go.